Jasmine Lowe from the University of Auckland is an emerging researcher based at the University of Auckland and has recently enrolled as a challenge funded PhD on modelling community based restoration efforts. Supported by senior researchers, Jasmine has led a piece of work showing how maps of stressor footprints translate to ecological response footprints. Jasmine, welcome. Uh, to the conference and uh, welcome to the stage. Kia ora everyone, I'm Jasmine and I've been working on um, this for the last two years with my awesome team, Rebecca, Judy, Joe, um, and Conrad and Simon. So over the next couple of, um, over this talk, I'm going to be discussing how we can use um, these footprints to understand um, cumulative effects. So our marine ecosystems have passed multiple tipping points because of the multiple human activities and stresses. Um, <laughs> sorry. And, um, and those have led to um, tipping points. And we can't really predict these tipping points because it's often these really small changes in, these, um, in our ecosystems that kind of lead to these tipping points. So if you kind of think of the analogy, the straw that broke the camel's back, all these straws pile onto the camel and you don't really know which straw kind of led to the camel's collapse. And so like the cumulative effects of many different pressures like pollution, fishing, and sedimentation, which leads to cumulative effects, um, we need to really understand how these responses impact our system. And it's important because we all depend on healthy marine ecosystems for our food, livelihoods, cultural and spiritual well-being. And in terms of management, we really want to understand these responses to reduce the amount of um, ecological surprises and further degradation. So. So in Simon's talk, he discussed the complexity of um, ecosystems and the need to in include all these interactions and feedbacks in the system. And he touched on how our current cumulative effects assessments aren't really able to do this because of this very linear hierarchical way of incorporating these stresses. And the current ones kind of just map, overlap, or add these stressor layers together and then kind of give a result of whether um, there's cumulative effects occurring or not. And so what we want to do to move forward from these cumulative effects assessments and progress is to um, incorporate this ecological complexity and responses and interactions. And to do this, we've kind of used the idea of um, ecological footprints. Okay. So imagine you're walking along the sand with your bare feet you generate a footprint, but the imprint is shallow and the traces of your footprint would most likely be gone after a wave washes over. Now imagine you're stomping along the sand and creating a very deep imprint. The traces of your footprint would most likely now fill with water as the tide laps, but they wouldn't be gone immediately. So like the different footprints you've created in the sand, they take different types of amounts of time to fill in, and we can use this analogy this analogy to assess how our ecosystems respond to these cumulative effects and how long they um, are likely to persist and stay in the environment. So all human activities and the stresses they generate affect the environment, leaving a distinct footprint with a different size, shape, and depth. And the term footprint has been used widely throughout the environmental literature to describe a varying levels of impact from local to a global scale. And these footprints describe how and where the activity has taken place. So that's the activity footprint. The stressor or the stresses the activity generates, that's the stressor footprint. And these are the two main types of footprints that are really focused in the environmental literature. Um, however, they don't really paint a clear picture of how our ecosystems really respond to these stresses. So we um, expanded on Elliot's um, it all's idea of these ecological footprints, and these are used to capture the spatial and temporal scale of these ecosystem responses. 
And the key thing to take away from that is the activity, stressor, and response footprints are really not the same. And it's because of these context dependencies, which include these non-additive and non-linear ecosystem response interactions, these temporal mismatches, place and time characteristics, and these indirect effects of stresses and connectivity between places. So over the next couple of slides, I'll just walk you through a couple of examples of these hypothetical landscapes and what these kind of footprints may look like. So um, for example, in, um, how do I use this thing? Oh yeah, in D here, um, we can kind of see that the ecosystem response footprint and the stress of footprint stretches away from the activity. And this can be due to um, biophysical um, things such as the currents, which kind of disperse the dis um, stresses away from the source. And then in this landscape here, we see quite a patchy response. And this is because habitats aren't all the same across the whole landscape. They're really patchy. And they also have um, different rates of resilience. So you can get a different, very patchy response. And um, an example. If here we see that there's another response generated far away. And this can be because of um, the removal of a um, source population, for example, the removal of a, a mussel bed like closer to the shore may affect um, the downstream um, population a bit far off um, in terms of recruitment. And then in this scenario here, where we have multiple stresses, we only see there's a small um, footprint generated in between. And this is because individually, these stresses may not generate a response because the resilience of these ecosystems can be a bit higher. But when we have an overlap of these stresses, a response may be generated because the resilience might be diminished. So here's an example of um, a conceptual footprint and what these multiple stresses um, could result in. And we suggest that the response footprints need to be characterized by the spatial extent and the depth because ecosystem responses to stresses are driven by various characteristics, often specific to a place and time. And we can then characterize these responses using ecological information, which include a combination of characteristics of the stressor regime the receiving ecosystem and its connectivity to other places, both physically and ecologically. And the spatial extent of the response stresses depends on numerous things, such as the stress of dispersal capacity away from the area. Um, for example, if the sediments from the river mouth moves away into different parts of the estuary, the biological connectivity across the landscape, and the spatial um, patchiness and species and habitat sensitivities and resilience. And kind of similar for the depth, but the depth here um, really talks about the magnitude of the response and the potential for the recovery. So that's the presence of multiple um, stresses, how long the stresses stay within the environment and the dispersal capacity of a stressor, as well as the habitat sensitivities and resilience of the ecosystems to um, respond to these stresses and bounce back. Okay. So response to footprints have different sizes and depths, which um, has really big implications on um, recovery, which Rebecca will talk more into. But I'll give you a couple examples. So for instance, a shallow footprint is not likely to last very long because this um, system is able to bounce back quite quickly after a um, small stress. For example, if we um, have a small amount of sedimentation that might cause turbidity and kind of um, block off photosynthesis for a little while, but then the sediments kind of settle down and photosynthesis is able to continue on. And in comparison, when we have a large stressor which removes our slow, large growing species, these are likely to generate blockages in um, recovery and cause lags, and then we might need assistance for these um, ecosystems to recover. So we can then use this correlation of depth and recovery, 
of response footprints to understand what types of management interventions really need to take place. So in summary, the management of coastal ecosystems is shifting towards more holistic approaches, which requires the understanding of how ecosystems respond to stresses. And using the footprint concept, we can really help communicate how cumulative effects impact our ecosystems and how they respond. Different ecological footprints require different management approaches. So for example, if we kind of overlay a um, footprint to this table, we see that shallow footprints might have a different approach to management, which requires just monitoring for further changes, whilst a deep footprint may require active interventions and management. And this allows us to compare effects in the places and prioritize restorative actions that help reduce the risk of degradation in our coastal marine systems and really help achieve this desirable management outcome. So I just want to say thank you all for listening and um, thank you to the Sustainable Seas Challenge for funding this project and a big thank you again to my fellow co-authors. Thank you. Thank you.